Are you okay with being average? Well, what is the average retirement savings? Well, let's kind of figure this out. Let's talk through it. But I know some people are going to get upset and say, well, it's not just the average, it's the median. So guess what? I've got the median in there today for you. And also I'm going to show you what potentially you could live on with the average retirement savings in retirement. And now I'm going to go over primarily the 55 to 64 year old. But from there, I am going to also show you some numbers for everybody else. So if you're staying with me here, you can kind of look at this as well and, and figure out what your average is. So where do the numbers come from? Well, the Federal Reserve does a survey of consumer finances. The most recent data is from 2022. And if you can look at the stock market charts, you're going to realize that you know the market has appreciated. So hopefully retirement accounts have went up as well since 2022. But with that, they survey 6,500 families. Now, it's interesting because I couldn't find the exact data on this. I know that's out there, but you know what 6,500 families are doing it. I'm curious if you would let me know in the comments, if you got a survey from the U.S. government or the Federal Reserve and it says, hey, can you help me complete this? Would you do it? You know, do you ever get those surveys in the mail that, you know, maybe leave like a dollar or something, you feel bad, should you do it or you just keep the dollar? I don't usually do them. And so uh, understanding the data, the data is produced in age brackets. We're focusing again on the 55 to 64, but I'll sneak some others in there. And the median and the average. So if you're trying to figure out what the median and the average is, think back to you know high school math, the average, you know, if you add up all the numbers then divide it by the number of people, you're going to get the average. Well, what's the median? The median's finding that middle line there because oftentimes the average can get skewed where you have somebody who's got $50 million and you got other people who only have $200,000, well, your averages could be way off. So the median is looking at really trying to find a median line. And a lot of people on YouTube like to come at us in the comments about those median numbers. So I want to make sure I put them in there for you today. So the numbers themselves, uh, the average 55 to 64 year old retirement savings, 537,000, according to that study. Now, let me know in the comments where you stand with this. I really want to know, you know, whoa, man, I'm doing really good. I feel better about myself or darn it. I got to catch up or you've got the median though, 185,000. So there's a big difference there. That's what we talk about. You know, and some people really want to look at that median number to make themselves say, okay, I'm all right now. I'm, I'm, I'm median. I'm not average, but I'm median. Uh, then you got total net worth average. Total net worth, I found this really interesting. Look at that, $1,564,000 for the average. And then the total net worth median is only 364000 So it just goes to show you that you're talking total net worth, including housing and everything. You know, some of these averages have a really expensive house because the average is way up there. But this also goes to show me that potentially even the person who is in the median range, 185000 still has nearly $200,000 extra that's in their house value. So potentially, this is an idea when you're retiring and you say, oh my goodness, how am I going to make it? If you got $364,000 total net worth, you could possibly sell the house off at the end of the plan, something like that to keep you going, to get you by if you had to. I know a lot of people don't want to have to do that, but it's an option. So other age ranges, I mentioned I'll say that and then I'm going to go into a minute, you know, also what you could live on. So really just to kind of give you an example here, other age ranges, 35 to 44, average retirement savings, 141,000, but the median is 45,000. Again, let me know, where do you stand on this? I'm, I'm truly curious to know where you stand as you're watching this. 45 to 54, uh, 313,000 average and 115,000 median there. So how much do you actually need? Well, you've got to figure out you know, your expenses. We always talk about this at Jazz with our clients. Know your numbers. You got to figure out exactly how much your total expenses are. Don't forget healthcare. That's a massive cost for a lot of people in retirement years. And then future costs. You know, you're going to have to potentially buy a vehicle or you know, get something there to continue to transport yourself around. Uh, you're going to have a roof. If you own a home, you're probably going to have to do a roof repair at some point. AC, major expenses that you're possibly not thinking of right this second when you're retiring and just figuring in your basic budget, you want to think through because that could really wipe you out if you're not careful. And then you want to build in, you know, your travel costs, your other goals, maybe, you know, buying a new home or that dream car. Some people, this isn't going to work for. If you're retiring and you're, you're trying to retire on the median, you might have to keep things pretty tight and say, hey, you know what? As long as I can retire and don't have to wake up and go to work every single day, or maybe you're one that says, you know what? I want to do those things and I'm going to even work part-time in retirement. That's becoming more popular as well. So there's a lot of things that you can consider when it comes to this and where you fall. 
key differentiators. So there's some things that you have to think through when it comes to the numbers and supplementing those numbers. Uh, one of those is Social Security, according to SSA.gov, the Social Security Administration, 1907 is the average in January of 2024. That's the estimate for what they're paying out in Social Security. Is your money all Roth or is it all pre-tax? That's going to be a big difference, especially if you've saved a lot more because you're going to bump into higher tax brackets, especially with required minimum distributions. But if you haven't saved a significant amount, hopefully it's not going to be as much of a differentiator there. Uh, do you plan to downsize your home? Just what I talked about earlier, trying to figure out what you're going to do with the median or the average money you have and then your total net worth, really trying to break that down to see what can I do to make this last longer? And then do you want to leave an inheritance or make your last check bounce? I had a client actually tell me that. Say, yeah, you know, I want to I want to make the last check bounce. I'm not worried about anything. And so if that's you, that will really change your spending plan because your spending plan potentially you can look at what we call a cash flow analysis. Well, that's going to show everything what they call in a linear fashion where let's just say you get a 6% return every single year on your money and maybe you're living on that same 6%. But what happens is we know the market is going to go up 12% one year, down 8% one year and bounce all around but it's going to average six. So that could really put you in a tight spot. And so there's something called a Monte Carlo that offsets that. And that Monte Carlo is running a thousand scenarios to figure out your probability of success. Well, that's exactly what I ran here with somebody that's retiring at age 55. Their average social security is going to start at 67 with the average there. And remember that's 1907 a month, right? The second is what social security says. Your average retirement savings of 537,000. We're talking all pre-tax in this scenario. Invested in a 70-30 allocation, 70% stocks, 30% bonds. That's going to be a big differentiator as well when it comes to you spending down the retirement. And your expenses of $3,000 monthly with 2.5% general inflation. Now, I'm just building that in as a baseline here. 3000 that's everything. That's all you got. Can you do it? Well, you got a 61% probability of having 165000 remaining at the end of the plan. It's going to be pretty tight. Just retiring at 55. Now, what if you're retiring on the median instead of the average? That could be different as well. So I want to, you to tell me in the comments, let me know. I'm really curious to know where you stand with this, what your thoughts are. If you think, hey, you know what? I'm retiring with the average, but I know I can make it. I've already ran the numbers. I want to know. Tell me about it. Also, tell me if there's something that you think that I'm missing that may be able to help others. I want to make sure that everybody's getting the answers they're looking for.